I want to really appreciate God for giving me the privilege to carry this gospel in this manner. He said in his words that you cannot pour a new wine into an old wine skin. I want to thank God for using me in this manner. I want to quickly talk about affirmation. I'm not here to define affirmation, but you must have heard about affirmation before. You, know, you hear the word affirmation. Anytime you hear the word affirmation, what comes to your mind? The words we speak are spirits and life. Let that sink in. The words we speak are spirit and life. Every time you affirm, you are giving life to what is the object of focus at that moment. Or you are feeding what you are affirming. For example, you say, I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Or, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. What is the purpose of affirmation to us Christians, to us children of God? Affirmation helps us to establish what was in existence before we begin to express ourselves in the body. For the word of God says that before I formed you, I knew you. See, before you were knighted up in your mother's womb, I sanctified you. As a matter of fact, God knows you before your both parents came together to decide to have you as a child. And uh, he had a plan for you. For as far back as over 500 years, the prophet Isaiah spoke about the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I communicating? So Jesus Christ was not a newcomer when he was born. In other words, he was known before he was born. So you were also known before you were born. So when you are firm, you are only reestablishing what was in existence before you came into your mother's womb to be conceived and given birth to. As a human being that is conscious of being a spirit being as well, spirits are ageless, spirits are timeless, they are formless. So if you call yourself a spirit being, before this age that you started counting, after the nine months of gestation period and birth, you are older than the age you proclaim. Because spirits do not carry age. So when you affirm, you are affirming to activate and to feed your purpose. Because the Lord said, before I formed you, I knew you. While David was going through challenges, he affirmed that I shall not die, but I shall live to fulfill the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. As a matter of fact, you are a manifestation of God's dimension. So when you affirm, you are giving life because the words you speak are spirit and life. You are feeding that which you already are before you are born. But if you have been making affirmations without reason, affirmations will do you no good. You have to have a lot of consciousness. You have to mindfully engage in affirmations. Knowing fully well that 
That time they gave you prophecy that you will make it. it was not the first time it was said about you. If there were prophets before your mom and your dad came together, they may have prophesied about your coming. Am I communicating? Because nobody is an accident. Nobody here is here for a purpose. But because of the way the world is today, it seems as if circumstances are deciding what should happen to us. All the children that came after Abraham were a manifestation of God's promise. And the only thing they can do to establish that promise is to feed it. And they will only feed it through conscious affirmations. What is that prophecy that is on your family? Of what tribe are you? I'm talking about beyond your tribe of ethnicity. As for me, I'm of the anointed tribe. Beyond my tribe of ethnicity, I'm of the anointed tribe. And uh, if I search back into my roots in the scriptures, I'm begin to quote verses like Jeremiah 20 verse 11. I read. It says, But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall what? Stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall greatly be ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be what? Forgotten. That is what comes with people that are of the anointed tribe. Beyond my physical ethnic root, Jeremiah is an anointed one of God. And I'm also an anointed one of God. And if the word of God says that you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are a joint heir with Christ. And you share authority with Christ. If you share the same authority as Christ, you are meant to always feed, give life to the promises that were in existence even before you were born in order to establish it. By spiritual genealogy, I was made in God's image and likeness. And regarding the blessing, I'm meant to affirm that I am the blessed of the Lord. Because when he said, let us make man in our image and likeness, he later said, and he blessed them. So I'm not waiting to be blessed. I am the blessed of the Lord. As a child of God, you are not supposed to be only spending a lot of time in the place of prayer, you are supposed to be affirming what was the promises concerning you. As a matter of fact, as a child of God, you are meant to be affirming only. Why should you affirm? You should affirm because before you were physically expressed through birth, you were in existence. Because the Bible said, before I formed you, I knew you. What does that mean? You are already in existence. By my spiritual background, I'm ageless. And if it's the spiritual realm that governs the physical realm, I am meant to also strengthen my life by affirming the promises of God that are on me. Now, if I affirm it, I'm giving life to it because my words are spirit and life. Hallelujah. Bible says that God's word is alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. If you now embody the word of God, you are alive and also active. In other words, if you allow the word of God to have his way, if you digest word of God always, you also be alive and what? Active. Hallelujah. Affirm with me. Say, I'm a manifestation of God's glory. Are you not? Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. Bible says you are like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, 
In other words, you should not take the back seat in the society. You are meant to shine as light. Be fearless. How can the one who made the heaven and earth be manifesting through you and you believe in fear? It's a taboo. From a manifestation of God's glory, I should not be afraid of anybody or any circumstance. If the God that can kill and make alive is my father and I'm made in his image and likeness, I should also be able to kill and also make alive. Now, the Bible references that exist in the scriptures, for example, Psalm 23, those are affirmations. In affirmation is not something that is new. It's something that was already promised. You are only giving life to it. And as a Christian, you should affirm always with strict belief in what you are declaring. You don't just affirm. There has to be a passion behind your affirmation for your affirmation to produce. Passion gives life to your affirmation. You look at your bank account, your bank account is telling you rubbish. You begin to shout, I am the blessed of the Lord. You need to be proactive. You need to be passionate. You need to be on fire. The passion puts fire in your affirmations. You know, when you are one with God, they say one with God is majority. A clear conscience. fears no accusation. Once fear has taken over you, the enemies will penetrate. Do everything you can to live above fear. Whatsoever it is that will sponsor fear in your life, avoid it. If there's anything you need to do, work hard towards achieving a clear conscience on your own. If you have a clear conscience, it's the first step towards making positive affirmations. Because you cannot begin to affirm with passion when you have so many skeletons in your cupboard. These are the hypocrisy that a lot of people express in the name of Christianity. No matter how powerful the affirmation may be, if your conscience is not free, it will produce no result. Tell anybody, walk towards a clear conscience. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your clear conscience will remain. As a spirit being, you existed before now. This is not your first time here. You had been existing before you were born. If not, why then did God say, before I formed you? That means you were in existence even before you were formed together. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're only occupying a body that began to grow. You are not this body. The identity the Lord was talking about was the spirit being that occupies this body now. So if God Almighty is looking at you, he's not looking at this body, he's looking at your spirit being. The formation of your thoughts is who you are. If your thoughts are not properly formed, then you have no life. A person without a proper mind management is a dead person. We have so many dead people in this world as we speak. They are alive but they are like those who are not alive. They are subject to other people's opinions. They are under the control of others. They are poor when it comes to being inspired. They always wait for others to go first before they go. Or they wait to be told to go before they go. Before Moses was, nobody ever led anybody through the Red Sea. He was inspired. Hallelujah. His purpose became the drive. What drives you? A lot of people don't even know their purpose, so they lack drive in the first place. What drives you as a person? Hallelujah. Ask yourself, what is my purpose? This is a time to reflect on your own purpose. When you know your purpose, it will inspire you to have a drive my purpose is what drives me i don't look to others for inspiration when i can hear god for myself 
and I'm inspired by him. I'm a trailblazer. I'm a trendsetter, which means that I need direct inspiration. So some of you may be the ones to carve a new path in that area government has called you into. If you are to carve a new path, you may not need a direct mentorship from somebody that is ahead of you. Because God Almighty may want to work with you in a very, very abnormal manner. Everything that is new is always questioned. While Elijah was here, the prophets of Baal, they were contending to see whose God is the most responsive God. They didn't even know Elijah's God. Against 400 prophets, Elijah was standing alone. How many of you can stand alone today? Those people were prophets as well. But Elijah was standing alone. Elijah was taking direct instruction from the Spirit of God. There are still people like that among us. But a lot have compromised. Hallelujah. Affirmations. Every day, feed your spirit with affirmations. You wake up in the morning, you say, I'm alive and active. Let your affirmations be in alignment with your purpose. Look for your purpose and look for affirmations that goes with it. Those affirmations that seem new to you were not even new in the first place. Because you are a manifestation of those affirmations you are even making. You are only re-establishing it. Hallelujah. Make sure you make affirmations every day with the consciousness of you being a spirit being and that you are giving life to your purpose. You are boosting who you already are. If you are not affirming, somebody is projecting towards you. And the person that may be projecting towards you may not even like you as much as you like yourself. It takes one person to dream. Your dream and your purpose may be too cumbersome, may be too heavy for another person to digest. So they will just give unnecessary interpretations. Interpretations that may not make much meaning because it takes one person to dream at a time. It takes one person to have a purpose at a time. Hallelujah. I will keep rising. Yes. That's an affirmation too. What are the things you affirm? As soon as you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, as soon as you are saved, you are now under the Abrahamic Covenant. Go and look for everything that concerns the Abrahamic Covenant and begin to affirm them day in, day out. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. May God bless his word. If you are conversant with the podcast, you can easily locate your Spotify application where you can catch us up by searching Apostle Solomon Paul on Spotify. And we are on Google Podcasts as well with the same name, Apostle Solomon Paul. We're also on Breaker Radio with the same name, Apostle Solomon Paul. And under the name Apostle Solomon Paul, you will find every of our broadcasts and you can click on any where you can be inspired by the Spirit-filled message as delivered by us in Jesus' name.